there were so many things when I met your pastor. I said, this guy is all right. Is it okay if I be myself? This guy pretty cool. But after we talked, I found out where his real swagger comes from. He's from Oklahoma. <laughs> He's an Okie. Yeah. Ephesians 320. And while we're getting that, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say this. I don't. I don't. I'm not going to stop till you help me. Yeah. Say, I don't. I'm going to say it one more time. I don't, I don't. Have, to have to see it, see it. to believe it. Yeah, I found ran when they sing that song. Mm -hmm. Say it, say it again. I don't, I don't have to, to see it yeah. to believe yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was good. I was good. I don't have to see it to be b e i t. I don't have to scoop us. I don't have to look at it to K-N-O-W it. <laughs> See, you can't convince me. I don't have this ring on my finger. You can say whatever you want to say. I'm just going to look at you because I know. And when you K-N-O-W, you're not confused or disheartened by what you see. You know why? Because you don't have to see it to believe it. That's good. Yes. Seeing is the end result. Knowing is the inner promise. Look at it like this. You, 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 you believe in God for something and your circumstances dictates to you it'll never happen. So you're caught in a wonderful place to allow what you see to be your Lord or to allow what he said to be your Lord. And if you're going to come to the side where you're going to believe what he says, he's going to say, I want you to prove it to me. How you want me to prove it? First of all, I want to ask you, God says, I got to ask you a question. If you really believe I said it, do I have to give it to you right now for you to know it? Ephesians 3.20. We ready? You're doing a good job, too. Hey, but before I go there, I got to say this one more time, okay? Would you help me one more time? I don't, I don't have to, have to see, it see it to believe it. To believe but, it. When I know it but when I know it, I'll just be it. <laughs> You're gone? When you know. Now, all glory to God, Ephesians 3.20 all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty work, power at work within us. Now, all glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Who is able, who has the ability, through his mighty power at work. In other words, he has the ability through processing us. Now, who is able through his mighty power? For example, in order for you to come sit here, you had to walk through that. It had to be a process. It, in order for you to get your P-R-O-M-I-S-E, your promise, you got to go through your process. Mm, yeah. And the wonderful thing about that is God is grooming us to do the impossible. Yeah. If 
you're asking God to do something for you and he hasn't done it yet, yet, the reason why is because you're asking for something that's too easy. Can I ask you to do me one more favor? I promise I'm going to quit asking you to do so much. Somebody say with me, I don't have to. That was prophetic. Man, that was prophetic. See it to believe it. In Genesis, way back in the Old Testament, you can find Genesis somewhere in the Old Testament, there's a scripture in the first chapter and the 26th verse that goes like this. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And conjunction, he's tying everything together. It's, it's, it's like this. When it's and, he's putting it together. So it'll fit. <laughs> and God said, let us make man in our image. Can I tell it to you in another way? One of the Hebrew writers puts it like this. And God said, let me make me another me. And God said, let me make me another me. In other words, God had this mirror. This is a mirror. It's not a tie yet. This is a mirror. Work, work, work with me. Work with me. Okay. So this is a mirror. And God, in other words, this is what God says. He's got this mirror. And he's looking at himself. And he's saying, all right, all right, you're looking good. All right, all right, all right. You're looking good. I, I got to make me someone else that looks just like me. Are you ready? We good? We good? Okay, in other words, when he made you, he said, he's looking in his mirror, he says, ah, let me make me another me. So when he was speaking to you, and when he was speaking to you, and when he was speaking to you, even when he was speaking to you, he was speaking to himself. And he said to himself, you're somewhere in the future. And you look much better than you look right now. <laughs> he said to himself, I know what you're going through has challenged you to forget that in your beginning, I put in you me. So in other words, Whatever situation that we are combated with, God is saying, hold up, wait a minute. I'm going to talk to you in another minute. In other words, God is saying, I got you here. The challenge with this is you've forgotten that I'm in it with you. Don't become so confronted with the storm that you forget the God that is with you in the storm. Where you are, no matter where that is, where you are is not who you are. And the reason why we forget that is because we began to deal with a weapon the weapon is a weapon of mass distraction. <laughs> we deal with the weapon of mass distraction. We go through so much stuff that we forget about our father. In other words, when we take our eyes off of him, we make whatever we're going through bigger than the God who made us. 
My hand right now is an offering plate. Have you ever been in the traditional churches where they have the offering plates and just walk around and they want too many? Well, I'm walking into a traditional mindset that says I'm going to give up and I'm going to quit. And I'm walking in here and I have this usher's bag pot in my hand and I'm asking you, please, go ahead and give me everything that said you wouldn't nobody. Give me everything that said you can't make it. Give me everything that said you will never do exceedingly and abundantly according to the power that's working in you. You know what? I got to tell you something. You're not in trouble. You're just in transition. You haven't even begun to see what God is preparing you for. Let me tell you how crazy my 2016 has, experience has been so far. It's been bananas. It's been quick, too clean, man. It's been crazy. I was sitting in Starbucks and Panera Bread. Anyone that knows me knows that's my spot. Don't you ask my spot. So, so I sit there and I read a lot. And I'm a serious reader. I read stuff sometimes that I hide from the Christian community because they're going to think I've backslidden and I don't know God. So since October, I've been studying Islam because I want to know. So I'm studying Islam. So in January, this guy who goes to the restroom at Panera Bread at 6.30 every morning, I know that because I'm there, and uh, he always passes by me, and he goes like this. And after a matter of time, he started going slow. <laughs> and he sat down and had a discussion with me, and he invited me to his church. He says, I want you to come and speak at my church. He didn't know me. I didn't know him. But I sensed that I was supposed to go. I said, tell me what time I need to be there. Well, so I had my Bible, and I had my suit. And for some reason, I felt like I needed to put on some designer socks. So, so, so I go to this church. Guess what? It was a Muslim temple. So I go in there, and I have to take my shoes off, but my socks was tight. <laughs> so, 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 so then the pastor gets up. They call them imams. And then they begin to talk in their worship language. Bismillah. Iraq move. I got the down, don't I? Iraq. And then the pastor, the imam, gets up to talk and he quotes a scripture out of the Quran that goes like this Allah has placed the perils that will direct and guide your life. And I said, Man, that's pretty good. But I had my game face on, you know, because I was a Christian. I wasn't telling him it was good. I was playing the game, you know. So then he gives me the mic and says, we want you to talk. All this studying I'm doing, right? So I stand up and I say, well, Matthew 6.33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things. And all these P-E-A-R-L-S that your pastor talked about will be added unto you. So I talked about the kingdom of God. And I told them that we are here to not represent the kingdom, but I'm here to represent the kingdom. <laughs> so after I talked for 20 minutes, the DNA kicked in. And I said, Pastor Imam, I, I know you probably don't, und anyway. I said, can I tell you what I sensed God saying to me? He said, just, yes. I said, okay. There's a lady back there. She's standing between those two ladies. Is it, do I have your permission to come up, ask her to come up? He said, he stared at me. See, in Islam, women and men sit separately. 
and they're considered second citizens. That's why they always drop their head. They can't look you in the eyes. They disrespect it. He says yes. The lady comes up front. I say to her, I don't know you, and I'm probably going to get in trouble, and it's okay. But God told me to tell you that he's going to heal you from cancer. I said, when you turn around and walk away from me, the power of God is going to touch you so severely that you won't be able to stand. <laughs> Imam kind of giggles. <laughs> so I give him the mic back, and I go to sit down, and he looks at her and says, you can leave. She turns around. Boom, she fell down. She did not get up. They had to pick her up. She was unconscious. They took her to her seat, set her down. She fell out of it. <laughs> she started doing something that goes like this. In the Muslim temple, he tells them to take her out on Sunday at 10.45 a.m. At Tuesday, 6.55 p.m., he asked me to come to Panera Bread and to sit in the same chair he sees me in. And he says, I took my wife to the and they said they cannot find case, cases of cancer anymore. I need you to repeat something with me. You don't have to see it to believe it. The question I got to ask you this morning is if you really trust him, why come you just don't thank him before he gives it to you? God is grooming us to another dimension in him. Life song, you have a very busy year for 2016. I don't know if you know or not, but you're getting ready to get very productively busy. The reason why I chose productively busy instead of just being busy is because sometimes you can be very busy doing the wrong thing. So when you productive, that means you producing, that means you are proactive and doubt cannot be a part of your DNA. I was sitting in Starbucks, minding my business, Read another crazy book. This guy comes to me and questions me about my thesis, my theory, my theology regarding Jesus and the scriptures and how it was inadequate. And I listened to him. The reason why I listened to him is because he bought me some free coffee. <laughs> so being that you want my time and you're going to tell me that I'm wrong, you got to pay for me to sit for you to listen to he invites me to meet some other elders. We go, and all of them tell me how wrong I am. Here's the challenge with that. I never said nothing. <laughs> I never ushered anything out of my mouth. So they invite me to meet some elders. And so I go with my crazy self. Pastor. So I go to this house, and these people are in there. And then they begin to tell me how Jesus ain't real. All that's a facade. And then I just begin to sing in my heart. While they're talking, I just sensed it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. And I was just singing and I began to cry. They said, oh, we didn't mean to offend you. I said, no, 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 no. You didn't offend me. I just hear this song in my heart. Because Christianity, my friend, the reason why I'm listening is because I'm trying to, when I finally get to talk, I'm going to tell you that Christianity isn't a religion. It's a relationship. It's like you telling me 
I don't have this ring on my finger. When you know you don't have to defend, it speaks for itself. I begin to sing the song, hallelujah. All of a sudden, the man's wife start crying. The power of God moved in there. I told that lady, I don't know any of you, but your daughter that ran away from home 15 years ago, she said, <laughs> and she just broke, I start screaming. I said, I know this Jesus thing ain't real, sir, so just bear with me for a minute. Just bear with me. I said, but your daughter that ran away from home 15 years ago, he said, she said, <laughs> I said, she's going to be coming home today, and she has two daughters. And the man laughed at me. When I got up to leave, there was a doorbell that rung. And there was this beautiful five-foot-six thin young lady that walked in, and she had two babies with her, and said, I've learned my lesson. I want to come home. The reason why I'm telling you this is for this reason. You don't have to see it to believe it. You just need to know it so God can develop it in you. I want you to know life song. When I walked in here, I kept walking in and out. I went back and sat into the car. It came back in. I went to sit back. Let me tell you why. Okay, I'm good. It's because I kept seeing the figure of a hand, a big hand, and it had this building in it. And every time... I would uh, come in here, I would see that figure just holding this building. And then I said, okay. So when we begin to worship, the hand brought it down. And he says, tell them within a 10 to 15, maybe a 20 mile radius of this building where we're at, 10 to 15, this is me, 10 to 15, maybe 20 mile radius, I'm going to cause, catch my language, a building to be attracted to them. <laughs> Y'all didn't catch it. You didn't catch that. You didn't catch that. You didn't catch it. Okay. How many married men in here? Okay, 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 okay. Y'all. No, 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 no. If, if females, don't say nothing. Just give us a minute, all right? We good? Y'all remember back in the day when you first seen old girl. Y'all remember that? You might have been walking. Y'all don't know anything about this, but us from Oklahoma, <laughs> we got a different definition from the swagology. See, 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 in Oklahoma, this is what we like to do. When we see her, we like to. <laughs> we positioned ourselves to be attracted to what made us stop. The challenge we had to do, or to overcome, is to convince what we was attracted to, to be attracted to us. It's one thing for me to be attracted to her, but when she's attracted to me, that means we have the right to engage and meet. I didn't say this church was going to be attracted to the church. I said the church was going to be attracted to you. So when this hand would present this building, it's going to give an offer that cannot be refused. You, listen to me. You have a very busy 2016. I didn't say 2017, 2018. I said 2016. 2016. You got a busy 2016. I'm trying to wrap this up. There's so much... There is going to be a prophetic melody that's going to come from here. There is going to be a prophetic melody, melodic. There's going to be a music that will be a medicine that's going to bring healing. And it's going to come from up here. It's going to be, not saying that it isn't already, because I studied to preach some mess. You were the one that said to me, I didn't have to see it to believe it. 
See, you changed me from one place and you caused my attention. The melodic music that's going to be medicine is going to be so powerful, people are going to begin to ask you for a CD. I'm telling you, awesome church, there is an assignment from God that there must be a melodic, a melodic, melodic music CD that comes from this that will touch the regions of the nation. God has this church and this musical awesome experience on the minds and on the hearts of people that you don't even know their name. You don't have to see it to believe it. I came to tell you this morning and to speak to your Ephesians 3.20 experience. I came to tell you that God has been grooming you. He's been developing you. He's been sharpening you for a greater day called right now. If you are asking God for something that you can do, God says to tell you he's not going to perform it. I'm coming this way for a reason. God says to tell you that he has demanded, demanded your faith. He has demanded your faith to operate out of a realm called impossible. God says, ask me for the impossible. Ask me for the impossible. I came to tell you Listen to me now, this morning, that you need to get off of your big A-S-K. I didn't say that other word. Come on, come on, come on. You need to get off of your big A-S-K and speak it out of your mouth. Whatever you're asking God for, he says, bring it up here. God, we need you to move. I can't do that. That's too easy for me. When you ask God for the impossible, he causes the impossible to become permissible. The question that you got to ask your God self is, do you have enough faith to believe in what you can't see? Do you have enough faith to believe that there's a DNA inside of you, the power of God that dwells on the inside of you, that's calling you to come up to another level? There's a building that's attracted to this church. You got it, I can't stop. There is a building. Are you ready? You got your seatbelt on? Say click, click. You the building. You the building. You are the building. He's causing you to be so attractive that he's going to give you a building to put in the building. The growth for this church in 2016, 2017 is going to be sporadic. It's going to come in spurts. And the reason why it's coming in spurts is because this is not designed to be a FAT church. This is called to be a M-A-T, U-R-E church. So when you desire maturity over cosmetics, it causes a lot of things to leave. It's easy to look good, but have no substance. So the growth here is going to be sporadic because it's going to bring a group of mature people. Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, the sun, the wind blows where it listeth. That means it has an assignment. The people that God is adding to this fellowship are going to be people that come on an assignment. So it's going to come sporadically, but it's going to become maturely. And as the DNA of God begins to execute throughout this church, God is going to expand it because there's a very strong leadership principle in this church. Leadership is very imperative and important in this church. Because lead, let me tell you why leadership is important. Because leaders beget leaders. Leaders don't beget fakes. Leaders beget leaders. So in the year 2016, 
God is going to add to this building another building, and it's going to have some sporadic growth. And then as that growth matures, then there's going to be another season of sporadic growth. And it's going to come to a point there's almost 250 people here within 2016 into before the middle of 2017. But it's going to be a mature body that's focus-driven. Success is intentional. You have to want to be successful. And when you have a vision to be successful, you have to understand that there's a storm that's going to come to see if you're serious. So God is saying, I'm going to grow this church, I'm going to expand it, and I'm going to explore it to a whole other region, but I'm going to ask you to get off of your big ASK and trust me in the realm of the impossible. Do I have anybody who will sniff your hand? Don't, don't lift your hand yet. Don't let me hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Do you have enough to believe beyond and ask God for the big ASK? Because God desires to blow your mind. Listen, are you liking the way it is now? No. God is saying, believe in me. Let me show you what I can do. How many people in here will lift your hand and say, I believe in the impossible? Yes, 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 yes. See, see, see so, 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 we know that God is getting ready to do the exceedingly and the abundantly. Above all, we can ask or think. Are we in agreement? I need you to do me a favor. I need you to say it out loud with me. I don't have to. I don't have to. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to see it to believe it. Believe. With that beautiful praise and worship team, come up here and help me for a minute. I don't go and sit down. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I don't have to see it to believe it. I don't have to see it to believe it. I'm, I'm thankful that God, you good on them drums, man. You good, you good, you good. <laughs> Gotta tell you something. I went to the airport at 4.30 yesterday morning. And I went in line, they checked, and they said, the plane is too full, you got to come back. Okay? So I go back at 1 o'clock, 11.30, get on the plane. They say, plane too full. <laughs> you got to come back. So went back at 4.30, plane leaves at 6. They said to me, we don't have a pilot to drive the plane. Get out of here. So I go back Saturday morning, 4.30. And... Uh, Got through the gate. So I'm waiting on the plane. Plane was canceled. So they need to go down to gate five. So I went to like five different gates. And uh, the plane was supposed to leave at 6.37. Didn't leave at 10.30. Had to catch the other flight that left at 11.30 to come to Denver. For some reason, we made it. I had 10 minutes to get to one place to go to the other. And so I was hitting it. And then when I walk in the plane, there was a couple sitting in the seat that I was going to be at. And the attendant said, uh, that's his seat. So you got to get up. And they looked at that lady and said, I ain't moving. I'm tired. I don't feel like going through. I said, I tell the lady, I said, man, I can go sit in the back. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. No, you got to get up. That belongs to him. And I'm looking at her. I said, man, it's no big deal. She says, sir, it's a big deal. And then she said, you need to move. And the lady said, no. And then I tried to tell them again, it's no big deal. And she looked at me like my mama used to look at me back in the day. Have y'all had one of the mamas to give you a look? You know it's time. Shut up. <laughs> she gave me that look, man. I, I took from that experience Delayed does not mean denied. When you think it's over, God said it's not over. And no matter what they say or what anyone says, if God has a seat that belongs for you, can't nobody sit in it but you. I came to tell you this morning, you need to get your seat back. You need to get your promise back. You need to get your promise back. 